Hi there, I'm Henry T. Casey from Tom's Guide, and it's time to talk about the new MacBook Air, which is a not an evolution, but a revolution. The first thing to know is the new Apple M1 chip enables incredibly faster performance. It's just insane. At one point, I had 20 gigabytes of 4K video doing an airdrop transfer in the background while I had 20 Chrome tabs, plus a 1080p YouTube video, plus multiple apps. Even Intel apps aren't optimized for Apple's universal binaries, which enable the same app to run an M1 chip and an Intel machine, and it was all running smoothly. And later on that day, I upped the video quality to 4K for when I was on a conference call on Cisco WebEx and added in a few iOS apps, because that's right, the new MacBook Air and all of Apple's silicon machines can run iPhone and iPad apps as well. You're really gonna be able to find out how much multitasking you can get done. It's really impressive. And that performance also is seen in benchmark scores. Apple's MacBook Air and the new one scored a 5,962 on the Geekbench benchmark. That's a multiple of the 2,738 that the previous MacBook Air did on a Y-series Intel processor. That Also, that 5,900 score that the Air posted, that's better than the Dell XPS 13 and the ZenBook 13s from Asus, which posted 5,000 from the Asus ZenBook and 5,300 from the XPS 13. Both those have Intel Tiger Lake Core i7 processors and 16 gigabytes of RAM. There are no slouches, but Apple's beating them too. Oh, transcoding video as well. The MacBook Air transcoded a 4K video to 1080p and handbrake in nine minutes and 15 seconds. That's a fraction of the 27 minutes and 10 seconds time from the Intel MacBook Air and the times from the ZenBook 13 and the XPS 13. It's just remarkable what they're getting done here. Oh, and I even was able to play Rise of the Tomb Raider, which looked great on the MacBook Air. I, I never expected I would be able to say I'd be running AAA titles on a MacBook Air. It's always just been the ultra portable. It's never been the gaming machine. It's not a gaming laptop yet, but this is much more gaming prowess than I ever expected. Next big thing to talk about here is battery life. It, Apple declared that its M1 chip would enable all day battery life and they've hit their marks. The Tom's Guide battery test, which is web browsing at 150 nits, took 14 hours and 41 minutes to drain the new MacBook Air of a full charge. That is over five hours longer than the time from the Intel MacBook Air and about an hour longer than the ZenBook 13's battery test score and three and a half hours longer actually than the Dell XPS 13's battery test score. It's just remarkable. Still good, the display. I mean, I would like it to be a little brighter. It's a little under 400 nits, but it's color output still good. And it's a display that I had I enjoyed watching Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse on and its color output is better than some of its PC counterparts. Also, audio sounds pretty damn good on this thing. It's got Dolby Atmos sound, which made Spider-Verse sound even better from the soundtrack to the actual dialogue as well. Also, Apple's still using the new Magic Keyboard it introduced earlier this year to its laptops, which make for much more pleasant typing than the pretty shallow butterfly switches of the previous MacBooks. Where would I change things? Well, we gotta talk about design and ports because a laptop doesn't exist only in its performance. The new MacBook Air looks exactly like the previous MacBook Air, which means its bezels are a little, mm, they're not thin. They're not as thin as the razor thin Infinity Edge bezels in the XPS 13. And also the ZenBook 13 from Asus is a third of a pound lighter. So there's ways that Apple could probably shed some weight or figure out a way to make, a, make the MacBook Air even more portable. Also, the ZenBook 13 has a full HDMI out port and a USB-A port, which, I mean, Apple, USB-C is nice, but nobody wants to always have to use an adapter if they want some of the ports they rely upon. On the left, you have the new MacBook Air with the M1 chip, and on the right, you have the MacBook Pro running an Intel processor from earlier this year. They have the same 720p webcam, but Apple's made some computational tricks to make the video on the Air look a lot better. My skin looks a lot more accurate on the left and also look a little clearer, not tremendously so, but enough so that it doesn't feel as embarrassing as, well, webcams traditionally are. Um, also, you can see the color quality in other parts of the image is actually better as well as the oranges and greens of the Kazuchika Okada Rainmaker knockoff shirt I'm wearing actually look correct on the air, whereas they don't really, they look a little washed out on the Pro, where because traditional webcams kind of have washed out color. It's something we've come to expect, come to, well, expect and roll our eyes at, and it's not great. 
but I like what Apple's doing here. Would like a sharper webcam in general, though. Find them, Apple. They're out there. I know Logitech's out of stock oftentimes, but find them. But overall, though, from its exceptional battery life to its fantastic performance, the new MacBook Air with the M1 chip shakes up Apple's world completely. Now, if you had thought about getting a MacBook Air in the past, but thought you might want a little more speed, and that's why you bought the MacBook Pro and spent a little more on it, you might be good enough to go with the MacBook Air. This is the biggest thing to happen to the Mac in quite some time, and we can't wait to see what the M1 chip and the other Apple Silicon chips for the desktop and laptop, how they change the Mac even further. Stay tuned to Tom's Guide and read our full review on Henry T. Casey signing off. Thank <laughs> you.